Dear students, today we are going to discuss about Optical Time Domain Reflectometer or OTDR. So, this OTDR technique or Optical Time Domain Reflectometer method is very useful for the field testing of an installed optical fiber link. See, actually it is an optoelectronic instrument and it is used to characterize an optical fiber and an OTDR or optical time domain reflectometer is an optical equivalent of an electronic time domain reflectometer. And this reflectometer or OTDR injects a series of optical pulses into the fiber under test. So that fiber will extract that pulses from the same end where we are connecting this OTDR uh, to that fiber. And so the light uh, traveling through that optical fiber may be scattered. Here mainly the Rayleigh bias scattering is taking place or it may be reflected back. That is main uh, reflection is due to Fresnel reflections. Mm, uh, so that reflected or scattered light will be uh, collected. And from the scattered or reflected light uh, that is gathered back is used to characterize the optical fiber. So this Mm, uh, method or OTDR op optical time domain reflectometer is used to measure the uh, used for fault detection mm, uh, or where that fault occurs along the length of the fiber or uh, it is measured to find the refractive index of the fiber okay so that um, that is mainly based on the uh, or uh, that calculation is mainly mm, uh, mainly uh, the length or uh, fault detection is uh, uh, calculated from the scattered light or reflected light so the main principle behind it is rally scattering uh, and Fresnel reflection so here it works on the principle of measurement of the back scattered light rather than the transmitted light so when we are experimentally finding out a fault along the fiber uh, we need only one um, end of the optical fiber um, so that will be easily available you know that um, for laboratory experiments Mm, uh, when we are taking a fiber we will get the two ends of the fiber so we can uh, put the experiment by taking the two ends of the fiber but uh, when the in, when the fiber is installed we will get only one end of the fiber so um, in the field set we will be getting only one end of the fiber um, so we can um, find the fault or uh, refract index of the um, fiber using the uh, one end of the fiber okay so let us see The definition OTDR is an acronym used for optical time domain reflectometer or it is an instrument used to detect or analyze the scattered or back reflected light through an optical fiber due to impurities and imperfections in the fiber. I have already said that um, it is uh, it works on the uh, principle of Rayleigh scattering and Fresnel reflection. You know that Rayleigh scattering uh, uh, takes place um, along the optical fiber whenever um, uh, the light is transmitted th through the fiber. Mm, uh, strikes the dop and particles in the fiber core that will be get, get scattered in all direction that is Rayleigh scattering and in the case of Fresnel reflection mm, uh, it is due to the change in the refractive index of the media that means whenever a light enters from one medium um, to another medium of different refractive index the reflection takes place so the main reflection will be Fresnel reflection that we have gone through uh, in the first and second modules of the optical communication so uh, this uh, instrument that is OTDR instrument is used to detect or analyze the scattered or back reflected light through the optical fiber due to impurities and imperfections in the fiber uh, and uh, the operating principle of OTDR is similar to the radar you know that in the case of radar we are uh, utilizing the um, reflected light and we will be calculating the we will be measuring the time uh, time uh, between the um, uh, sent pulse and re uh, received pulse uh, from that we are calculating the range similar way we are um, uh, uh, we are calculating here the distance by using the um, uh, time duration by utilizing the time uh, time taken uh, between the sending and receiving pulses so the OTDR performs a timed measurements on the reflected light and OTDR basically determines the characteristics of an optical fiber cable through which optical signals propagates and here the characteristic means that we can measure the um, length of the fiber where a, um, uh, where a, where a defect occurs or we can um, calculate the refractive index of the fiber like that so um, uh, it is used to evaluate parameters such as splice losses 
reflectance angle of a light signal, fiber attenuation, etc. When the signal is transmitted through an optical fiber cable, then during transmission, some part of the signal gets reflected and this reflection results in the signal attenuation that mainly occurs due to defects in the optical fiber cable. So, um, we can use this OTD or op optical time domain reflectometer uh, can be used as a testing equipment the, uh, in the optical fiber communication uh, to determine the uh, signal loss levels inside the fiber cable. And this is a figure of an optical time domain reflectometer and here uh, the display screen shows the uh, when we are measuring a fault uh, where the fault occurs inside the fiber um, uh, so this displays, display screen displays uh, the power level of this reflected signal uh, so y axis represents the power level and x axis uh, represents the distance uh, distance see uh, let us see the working before that you can go through uh, this um, block diagram so here we will be using a um, source that means optical uh, time domain reflectometer source basically we are using a laser source then the signals will be or light signals will be um, generated here and that will be passed uh, to the optical fiber cable for that uh, we need a coupler and here coupler is a th three port device Mm, and it will couple the mm, input signal to the output signals and but uh, all the input signals will not be coupled to this fiber uh, will not be coupled to the fiber we can either use this coupler or circulator instead of that coupler but the cost of the circulator is higher comparing to that coupler so we here we are using coupler to couple the um, signals from the source laser to optical fiber here you can see that the connection is made to one end of the fiber because in practical cases whenever uh, in the case of an installed fiber we will not be getting the um, two ends but for experimental um, laboratory setup we will be uh, getting uh, two ends of the fiber so you can or we can make the experiments by um, uh, taking two ends of the fiber but here it is shown that only one end of the fiber is uh, uh, taking we are taking one end of the fiber and uh, uh, it is also shown that the reflected light path is also shown from the fiber. This is the input signal and this is the reflected signal. So that reflected signal uh, will be um, detected by a photo detector that is connected to the coupler. Um, and that photo detector will measure the uh, signal level of the reflected light. So it will be converted to that light signal will be converted into suitable electrical level. And uh, um, that will be sometimes it will be a um, smaller level. Uh, and that reflected signal will be displayed by the display unit that is uh, this one that is uh, the display unit is here uh, this optical time domain reflectometer so display section and before sometimes in some block diagrams a log amplifier is shown here because basically the signal level is very low so in order to amplify that we are using a log amplifier so um, here you can see the, this uh, optical time domain reflectometer display will shows the logarithmic value of um, output power in decibel okay uh, that is we uh, that is why we are using a log amplifier in some um, block diagrams that is not shown here mm, uh, so this is a basic block diagram of the operation of the optical time domain reflectometer let us see the working of the otdr so here the laser diode launches a sharp optical pulses into the test fiber through a coupler and due to rally backscattering Mm, that may be occur along the length of the fiber a part of the light pulses will be reflected back mm, back from the end of the fiber mm, and that will be collected by the mm, uh, that will be traveled through the uh, uh, coupler and it will be mm, detected mm, uh, uh, detect uh, photo detector through the coupler basically the coupler is a three port device and it connects the laser output to the mm, test fiber and to the backscattered light from the uh, backscattered light from the optical um, uh, fiber so here you can see that uh, whenever um, uh, the signal is uh, collected by the uh, photo detector that will be uh, shown on the uh, screen of the optical uh, time domain reflectometer and basically you can see here the display uh, section uh, will contain a curve like this here the y axis shows the optical power level and x axis shows the distance along the fiber mm, and you can see that it will uh, sh uh, the, there are different uh, spikes in the OTDR display screen level the vertical axis measures the back reflected light in decibel value 
and that scale will be logarithmic in scale mm. so mm, here you can see that uh, there are some spikes uh, in this display unit and uh, that represents a different uh, um, uh, different defects that is due, this spike is occur occurring due to this back scattering and uh, that represents uh, for a particular distance uh, that spikes occur means that uh, there will be some defect occur um, at that point similarly uh, this is due to connector reflection and uh, uh, this is due to splice losses and here Mm, this is due to fiber and uh, reflection so this spikes re represents um, uh, reflected portion uh, reflected light uh, that that is due to the defect occurring in the fiber that means that uh, for a particular at this length uh, there will be some defect that is why uh, uh, this reflected uh, th th that is why this reflection occurs as a result we will be getting a spike in the um, screen of the otdr uh, display so here let us see by inserting see here we have uh, we have said that we are using couplers uh, in order to couple the light from the laser source to the fiber instead of couplers we can utilize the circulators because they are highly directional devices mm, but uh, when we are inserting circulators mm, in that uh, OTDR uh, the dynamic uh, range of the equipment can be improved but, uh, but the overall cost of the system will increase due to the high cost of this uh, circulators uh, during the propagation of the light pulses inside the fiber due to absorption and rally scattering some losses in the transmitted pulse occurs also some losses are introduced due to splices connected inside the fiber or the um, uh, bends inside it sometimes the variations in, uh, in the refractive index also causes the light energy to get reflected so this reflected energy reaches the otdr and in this way it detects the characteristics of the fiber link so the otdr trace whenever we are going to the theory portions of this uh, otdr trace the reflected light is traced on the display screen of the reflectometer um, and in that trace uh, reflected power is shown on the y-axis uh, y-axis represents the optical power level of the reflected signal and the x-axis represents the distance between the measurement points of the optical link and the positive spikes in the trace are the results of the Fresnel reflection at the joints of the fiber link and the imperfections in the fiber and the shift in the curve are due to the losses that occur due to the fiber joints so a deteriorated tail in the curve is the outcome of the Rayleigh scattering as the Rayleigh scattering is the result of the fluctuations in the refractive index of the fiber and is a major reason of the attenuation of the signal inside the fiber. So this OTDR can be used to measure the attenuation in the fiber. Okay. See in the case of um, OTDR there is an important point that uh, there is a dead zone in the case of OTDR. Uh, uh, so the dead zone of the OTDR is a crucial parameter and it actually represents the distance in the fiber cable at which the defects cannot be measured properly so that is a dead zone uh, at that points um, we cannot measure the uh, defects correctly so um, we can uh, see how a distance is measured in the case of uh, distance of the fault is measured um, uh, by using the OTDR um, the fault location that is the fiber length L from the front end of the fiber is calculated from the time axis on the display Mm, screen the uh, time t on the display screen represents the time taken by the pulse to reach the fault location and then return to the front end of the fiber mm, uh, see when we are mm, passing a test pulse it will be mm, uh, passing through this test fiber and uh, at the fault location and that means whenever there is an imperfection in the fiber then the light will be reflected back or scattered so that reflected back, back uh, reflected light will be collected by the photo detector uh, through the coupler so we will be um, measuring the uh, time between the uh, sending and, the, and uh, receiving and the, or we can calculate the uh, length uh, uh, length uh, along this fiber uh, actually length cannot be measured directly length is measured by utilizing the uh, time taken by this uh, reflected light so uh, we will have an equation uh, for the 
length of the fiber uh, imperfection or fault detection is as a, uh, d equal to t into c by 2n where t is the time taken um, for this uh, light pulse to uh, travel through this fiber and reflect it back to uh, this end so it is a time taken for this Mm, travel so mm, it will be mm, multiplied by c and then it will be divided by 2n where c, mm, c is the speed of the light in the vacuum and n is refracting mm, of the medium mm, so uh, by utilizing this equation we can uh, find out the uh, length mm, uh, so where, where the fault occurs so up to that point the length is measured by using this equation uh, and this is the otdr distance measurement setup so next is Mm, OTDR is characterized mm, uh, by its uh, dynamic range of operations uh, or its pa performance parameter is dynamic range. Actually, this dynamic range uh, decides the maximum length of the fiber over which various measurements can be taken. Mm, and it is uh, decided by the total mm, uh, pulse power and the sensitivity of the photo detector. And uh, next, we can go to the reliability and uh, quality of the OTDR requirement. The re reliability and the quality of the OTDR is based on its accuracy measurement range ability to resolve and measure closely spaced events and measurement speed and ability to perform satisfactory under various environmental extremes so the instrument is also judged on the basis of the cost features provided size weight and ease of use so um, uh, for specifying the otdr we are using uh, some terms accuracy and measurement range accuracy um, is defined as the correctness of the measurement that means it is the difference between the measured value and the true value of the event being measured suppose if you are me me measuring attenuation um, or if you are measuring length and uh, actually um, uh, the accuracy has an important um, point uh, um, so actually accuracy represents the difference between the measured value and the true value of the event and the next one is the measurement range and it is defined as the maximum attenuation that can be placed between the instrument um, and the event being measured and for which the instrument will still be able to measure the event within the acceptable accuracy limits. Next is the uh, uh, instrument resolution uh, and the resolution um, means that it is a measure of how close two events can be spaced and still be recognized as two separate events. Mm, and the duration of the measurement pulse and the data sampling interval create a resolution limitation of the OTDR. Uh, shorter the pulse duration, uh, then the shorter the data sampling interval and the better the instrument resolution, but the shorter the measurement range. So that's the uh, uh, resolution of the instrument. Mm, and the next is the, uh, mm, some uh, OTDR manufacturers use a masking procedure to improve the resolution and the procedure uh, um, uh, the procedure shields or mask are detected from high power um, fiber reflections and that will preventing uh, detector overload and eliminate the need for detector recovery and uh, uh, resolution is often limited when powerful uh, reflections return to the OTDR and temporarily overload the detector um, uh, when uh, this occurs some uh, time is required before the instrument can resolve the second fiber event. Uh, so this is all about this OTDR um, that is optical time domain reflectometer. Thank you.